with just a week left until Election Day. Important to remember, already millions of Americans have started casting their ballots. More than 22.9 million have cast early ballots, according to data firm Target Smart. That's more than all early votes cast in the 2018 cycle combined, a signal that there's at least people out there who want to get it done early, potentially a signal of boosted enthusiasm and participation. We'll see once Election Day rolls around. With seven days to go, just one week, I'm joined by two of my CBS News colleagues. Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes is on the North Lawn for us. And Congressional Correspondent Nicole Killian is in Augusta, Georgia, at a Herschel Walker campaign event. We'll get to Nicole in a moment. But, Nancy, I want to start with you. The president today in Florida, where earlier he spoke, uh, sort of going to a classic uh, crutch, if you will, for Democrats, discussing potential threats to Social Security and Medicare if Republicans get control of Congress. Let's take a listen. If Republicans in the Congress have their way, the power we just gave Medicare to negotiate prescription drug prices goes away, gone. In the Sunshine State, of course, home to many, to millions of seniors. Uh, he's in South Florida tonight doing some work with Democrats. Remind us why he's there, who he's with. And, and whether Democrats think this actually uh, could help, given that polling suggests it's the Republicans in those statewide races that could pull it off. Uh, well, Democrats need the uh, equivalent of a Hail Mary in Florida, frankly, Ed. Uh, as you know, you've got Val Demings, Congresswoman, running to try to unseat Marco Rubio, the Republican senator. And you've got uh, Congressman Charlie Crist running to unseat the Republican governor, Ron DeSantis. And in both cases, the Democrats are trailing pretty significantly uh, in some cases and uh, when it comes to Crist, even potentially by double digits. So it is a, a tough, tough uphill climb for Democrats. Seems to get tougher in Florida with every election cycle. But the president made a promise to Chris that he would come to Florida and campaign with him. That trip was supposed to take place weeks ago, but Hurricane Ian got in the way. So the president is making good on that promise now, making an argument that, as you pointed out, is tailor-made for seniors, arguing that uh, Social Security and Medicare could be at risk if Republicans retake control of the House and the Senate, and more broadly, Ed, arguing in Florida that uh, so much of his agenda and the things he has already managed to pass when it comes to uh, prescription drugs and Medicare could get rolled back if Republicans take control of the House or the Senate. And remind us, where else is he headed this week? And does it continue to be a mix of these sort of more formal policy-focused appearances, or are we going to see overt campaign rallies uh, with the president alongside fellow Democrats? You know, it's always a dilemma when uh, any president tries to plan midterm campaigning in this final week because uh, the candidates who need the most help are the candidates in these swing states or swing districts, but they are also the candidates who probably wouldn't benefit from having a president from their party come and campaign because they're trying to reach independence. They're not necessarily trying to reach the base, and particularly when you talk about a president like President Biden, whose approval ratings are not the highest right now. They're in the low 40s. And so uh, he's got an interesting slate of um, midterm election stops over the next week or so. He's going to be uh, in Miami tonight. Then he's going to New Mexico and California. California, you know, a state that you'd assume would be pretty safe for Democrats at this point, and it is, but nevertheless, it is uh, fertile ground for him when it comes to fundraising. And also, uh, he'll get a very warm welcome there. He's also going to be in Pennsylvania, a state that he has returned to time and time again throughout this campaign season. He's got a great affinity for Pennsylvania. He uh, comes from Scranton originally. He's going to be heading back there again. And then he's finishing up with a rally in Baltimore, Maryland, next Monday with the vice president. Once again, uh, not a spot that is uh, particularly contentious for Democrats. Uh, they're not worried about losing the state, but, uh, but it's friendly territory for this president. He's not going to run the risk of uh, driving any uh, moderate or independent voters away with a last-minute stop in a swing state or a swing district. Yeah, and, and it means that he's spending the last night with a sure thing, and that is Wes Moore, the Democrat running for governor there, uh, seems safer to be with him than perhaps along a lot of those other candidates you mentioned. And, of course, former President Obama is also out and about, right? 
That's right. And uh, his dance card is a little more full. He has been in high demand uh, all across the country. Um, of course, you uh, always end up being a little more popular when you're out of office. Uh, and, and that is certainly the case for President Obama. Not only have candidates been clamoring for him to come campaign for them, they've also been clamoring for him to cut ads with them or, um, you know, appear with them in, in various venues. So uh, the, uh, President Obama, he's in Las Vegas tonight. He's going to be in Arizona tomorrow. He's uh, in, in Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania over the weekend, and he's able to trot out a slightly sharper message than President Biden can. Um, you know, he's not in office any longer. He doesn't have to worry about uh, the what what lies ahead if if Republicans take control of the House or Senate, and then he then has to work with the people that he has just criticized. Uh, none of those uh, restraints apply to him anymore. So he's able to uh, get out there and make the case in a full-throated way. And uh, he's always been a pretty effective campaigner. So you're going to see a lot of him, along with a lot of uh, former President Trump and even even uh, former Vice President Mike Pence hitting the trail on behalf of Republicans. That's right. And, you know, one of those other Democrats that's throwing sharper punches because he's not president and he can is California Governor Gavin Newsom, who spoke over the weekend with our Major Garrett about the future of the Democratic Party and what it's facing this midterm election cycle. Major asked him a bit about how he thinks Democrats are doing and selling what they're running on to voters. Take a look. I can't believe the other side is winning, and they are right now. You have to. I think we have to level set. I think Democrats can. We could fall complacent and, and sort of delude ourselves. The other side is ruthless. They're winning the messaging war. They put us on the defense over and over and over again. Uh, they have weaponized grievance. They've amplified a message with surround sound, and we have nothing comparable on our side. It's remarkable. Democrats have done as well as they've done under these circumstances. They have weaponized grievance, he says, and that they Republicans are ruthless, and perhaps Democrats could be more so. Uh, that is something we've heard more and more from Democrats concerned that the White House, given those low approval numbers you mentioned, can't necessarily be the one throwing those punches. Um, but quite striking to hear him say that about the party overall. Right. And uh, well, the case he appears to be making is that if you're willing to say anything, you can come up with a pretty exciting message that uh, that gets a lot of attention. It's sort of uh, the, the the Trump Clinton race all over again from 2016 when uh, President Trump was out there willing to say uh, just about anything, it, it became harder for Hillary Clinton to kind of break through with her own message. And so uh, whether you're talking about um, uh, election denialism uh, or, um, you know, it, 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 as, as Newsom argued, scapegoating immigrants or, um, you know, uh, creating fear about, about crime coming to people's neighborhoods. Uh, the case that he's making is that uh, because uh, his opponents are willing to kind of uh, go out on a limb and, and, um, and stretch the truth, more than Democrats might be willing to do, that uh, that, that puts them at an advantage, uh, that it, it doesn't actually hurt them, it helps them. Now, Republicans would argue, uh, no, it's the fact that uh, Democrats focused uh, so heavily on abortion while they were focused on, on issues like the economy and crime, issues that Americans care about, that, that they're doing better than they were a couple of months ago. And I suspect there's uh, some truth to uh, what both sides are saying here, uh, particularly when you see new polling like we saw from the Wall Street Journal just today that shows a really dramatic 26-point swing among suburban women voters just in the past couple of months. They were supporting Democrats by uh, 11 points back in August. Now they're supporting Republicans by 15 points. That yeah. is a really profound swing, and it's part of the reason that uh, Republicans are now slightly favored to win control of the House and even potentially the Senate. Seven days to go, and, uh, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Nancy Cordes for us on the North Lawn. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later.